You talk about one of the final engagements that um, Harry and Meghan had, one of their final formal engagements. And um, it was a moment in the stateroom and you said Meghan began to cry and that she said she can't believe this is it. And you also talked about a moment in March of this year where she hugged you and she said to you, it didn't have to be this way. What did you take from that statement? Because there could be so much meaning in those words, it didn't have to be this way. I think that final engagement at Buckingham Palace not only was a poignant moment, this was a member of the royal family taking their sort of last steps as a working royal uh, in a palace setting. For me, as a royal correspondent, it was surreal. But I think to see Meghan so emotional in that moment and so vulnerable just showed how far she felt that she had been pushed at that point. The couple had really done everything they could to make it work. As we know, at the start of the year, they presented that roadmap to what we've referred to as a half-in, half-out working model. Mm -hmm. And the fact that that was rejected and they were forced into this position of stepping away, that is what didn't have to be this way. And I think that's what the couple really found difficult to come to terms with as they headed off back to Canada, that their family hadn't seen the grievances that they brought to the table or try to be flexible in any way whatsoever. As is often the case in the royal family, duty comes first. And in that instance, the, what they proposed just wasn't going to work for the institution of the monarchy. The decision that I have made for my wife and I to step back is not one I made lightly. Do you feel like if Harry wouldn't have married Meghan, that he would still be a part of the firm and never would have left? I think whoever Harry married would have been that gateway to exploring a different kind of life, to challenge the work settings around him. Harry's someone that I think has always needed a teammate to really complete the picture. Mm. Um, I think sometimes being on royal engagements with him when he was working by himself, I always felt that he would really benefit from someone by his side. He would say so much more. And I think in some ways we've seen him emboldened uh, by his relationship with Meghan. She's given him confidence, or at least mm. that relationship and being a father has given him confidence to speak out and be more vocal about things in a way that he hadn't before. I would argue mm -hmm. that if Harry had said to Meghan, let's stick it out for another five years, that she would have really gone for that because as we heard from the sources speaking in the book, she gave up everything. She was willing to give her life to it. And the way it ended so quickly, I do not think was what she had in mind. Yeah, well, I guess, and also thank you for asking because not many people have asked if I'm okay, but it's, uh, it's a very real thing to be going through behind the scenes. Do you think she, her mind just didn't really grasp it or is she too much of an individual to ever just be able to do it? I think there's a difference between being warned before marrying someone like Prince Harry that your life will change for good, that the press will not leave you alone and to be reminded of what Diana went through, uh, but particularly during those diff very difficult times after her divorce with Prince Charles. And these are things that Meghan would have gone into that marriage knowing. But it's very different to know it than to live it. And I think whilst we saw Meghan put on a very brave front publicly, uh, as the book tells behind the scenes, she really struggled with some of those intrusions and just to have so many people involved in her life. We're a fantastic team, we know we are. Do you feel like that Harry and Meghan have any responsibility in this at all? It can't just be the everything that they did is right and everything that everybody else did is wrong. I think really where it fell apart is the fact that Harry and Meghan did want to do things differently, that they did want to restructure the way that they worked within the institution. But you have to remember this is a firm that has been around for a very long time and things work very well the way they do. You can't just go in and try and change things and expect everyone to agree with you. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are times like that where we saw Harry and Meghan arrive in the UK at the start of the year with this roadmap of how they wanted to work moving forward. I know that for other members of the family, they felt their noses slightly put out of joint at that time because uh, as one aide said to me, it was like they just arrived and handed in a rider that, mm. and said that Charles was gonna pick up the bill and they were gonna fly back to Canada and get on with their new chapter. And of course, it doesn't work like that. There are many layers to go through. It is an institution, there is tradition within that, that has to be respected. And so I think in some ways their eagerness to bring change and do things differently also got them into trouble because that just was never going to work within the space that they wanted to do it.